Hi, this is Marcus Yanni Fernandez and this is my teaching demonstration for grade 9 mathematics. Good morning, class! Okay, please stand and April, please lead the prayer. Okay, once again, good morning, class! Please take the piece of papers under your chairs and arrange your chairs properly in one... Okay, who is absent today? None? Very good. So, a few reminders. No cell phones allowed in the class. No unnecessary noises. And please listen attentively. Before we start, can someone tell us about our topic last meeting? Yes, Edmore. Okay, it's about Multiplication of polynomials. It is important to remember and understand our past lessons. It is because it is related to our topic today and for our succeeding lessons. Okay? But before we start, we will try to regain your skills in determining the factors of a whole number. We will do this by think pair share. So, you are going to work with your seatmates. Is that okay? Are you excited? I'm going to show you whole numbers through a flashcard and you need to give me all the possible positive factors. Okay, let's start. First, we have... Yes, Carisa and Carlos. Okay, 1 and 21 and 3 and 7 because 1 times 21 is equal to 21 and 3 times 7 is equal to 21. Okay, next one. Yes, Dave and Joyce. Okay, we have 1 and 36, 3 and 12, 2 and 13, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. Very good. We have... Okay, yes, Ian and Naika. Very good. We have 1 and 55 and 5 and 11. Great. Another one. Yes, Chriselle and Tyron. Okay, we have 1 and 68 and... What? 2 and 34. Very good. And the last one, we have, okay, yes, Joey and Rose. 1 and 81 and 9 and 9. Very good. Let's give a bravo clap for everyone. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Bravo! So before we start, can someone tell us how can we say that the two numbers are factors? Yes, Gerald. Very good. If we multiply the two numbers, we come up with the other number, which is their product. Now, how can you relate it to our past lesson, which is the multiplication of polynomials? Okay, yes, Glenn. Very good, because if we multiply two polynomials, we also come up with the product, which is the highest degree is Two. Now, if we equate it to zero, what do we call this equation? Oh, yes, Ian. Very good. It is quadratic equation. So, the topic today is about quadratic equation. Can someone define quadratic equation? Yes, Carlos. Very good. Quadratic equation is an equation of the second degree, meaning it contains at least one term that is squared. The standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero, with a, b, and c are the numerical coefficients where a is not equal to zero and x is the unknown variable. Now, how can we solve it? 
to solve the values of x, we use different methods. First is by using the quadratic formula. So what is the formula? x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We get the value or the values of x by substituting the values of a, b, and c in the formula. Now, the second one is by the factoring method. In the form, x plus c1 times x plus c2 is equal to 0, where c1 and c2 are both integers. So before we solve some example, what is meant to solve the value of x? Yes, Silverio. Very good. We solve the values of x to satisfy the equation. So now, if we have 4x plus 6 is equal to 14, what is the value of x? Yes, Rose. x is equal to 2. Very good. So how did she solve it? 4x plus 6 is equal to 14. Transpose positive 6 to the other side of the equation, which is negative 6. So, 14 plus 6, then 4x. So, we have 4x is equal to 8. Then, divide both sides by 4. We get the value of x which is 2. Okay, so how can we check it if our answer is correct? Yes, Benny. Exactly, just substitute the value of x in the equation. So we have 4 times 2 plus 6 equals 14. And then 4 times 2 is equals 2, 8 plus 6 equals 14. So, 8 plus 6 is equals to 14. It satisfies the equation. So, we can say that 4x plus 6 is equals to 14 if x is equals to 2. I think I can erase. Now, we all know that 4 times 0 is equal to 0, right? So, what is the rule behind it? Okay, yes. Yes, Jenny. Okay, any number multiplied by 0 is equal to 0. So, if we have x times y equals 0, we can assume that x is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0 or we can also say that both of the factors are 0 because 0 times 0 is equal to 0. Now if we have x minus 3 times x minus 4 is equal to 0 what are the values of x? Okay. We just treat x minus 3 our, as our x factor and x minus 4 as our y factor. So we have x minus 3 is equal to 0, x minus 4 equal to 0. So... We just transpose negative 3 on the other side of the equation and also the negative 4 on the other side of the equation. So we have the values of x are positive 3 and positive 4. Okay? Now, now let's try multiplying x minus 3 times x minus 4. Like what we did in our last topic. So, using full method, we will get x squared. Oh, 
Okay, minus 7x plus 12. Very good. Equals 0. So, we already have a quadratic equation. So, this is the process or the reverse process of factoring method. So, we have factors x minus 3 and x minus 4. So, now let's try solving the values of x by using the quadratic formula. Let's check if the values of x are 3 and 4. So, we have x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. So, what is our the formula? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. Now, what is our a? What is the value of our a? Yes, 1. b is equal to negative 7. And c is equal to 12. Now, let's substitute the values of a, b, c into our formula. So, we have x equals, what is our b? Negative 7. So, we have 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Seven, negative 7 squared is 49 and less 4 times our a, which is 1, and our c, which is 12. Now, we are, of course, all over 2 times our a, which is 1. So, we have x equals 7 plus or minus 49 less 48, which is square root of 1 all over 2. Now, we have x equals 7 plus square root of 1 all over 2, and we have x equals 7 less square root of 1 all over 2. So, what, uh, what are the values of our x? 7 plus 1 is 8, all over 2 is equal to 4, and 7 minus square root of 1, which is 1, so 7 minus 1 is equal to 6, divided by 2, we have 3. So, do we have the same values of x? With different methods? Yeah. We all so come up with the values of x which are 3 and 4. Now. Another example. Okay, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So, let's use first the quadratic formula. So, first, let's identify, first, let's identify our a, the value of our a, which is 1. B is equal to 5, and C is equal to 6. Now, we have X equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 5. We have 25 less 4, our A times our C, which is 6, and all over... 2 times our a, which is 1. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of what? 25 less 24, which is 1, all over 2 times 1 is 2. So we have x is equals to negative 5 plus 1 all over 2 and x equals negative 5 minus 1 all over 2. So x is equals to negative 4 
all over 2 or x is equal to negative 2. The other one, x is equal to negative 6 all over 2 or x equals negative 3. Very good. Now, let's try solving this equation through, yes, through factoring method. We have, so we have the values of our x, which are, so we have x times x, which is x squared. Then, let's think of a number, let's think of two numbers, which their product is 6. We have 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. So, which of these pairs have the, pro uh, have the sum of 5? Very good, 2 and 3. So, we write positive 2 and positive 3 because 3 times 2 is equal to 6 and 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Okay? So, we quick got factors to 0, then we have x plus 2 equals 0, then our x is equals to transpose positive 2 on the other side of the equation, we have negative 2. And the other one is x plus 3 equals 0. So, transpose positive 3, the value of our x is equals to negative 3. Do we have the same answer? Okay. Another one. We have Another example, I'll just write it here. So we have x squared plus 7x is equal to 0. So what can you observe with our equation class? Yeah, we, ha we don't have constant term. So we treat it as equals to 0. Now, which method do you prefer to solve this equation? Okay, let's try factoring. So we have x and then think of a number where the sum is 7 and their product is 0. So we have, what are 7 and Zero. Because 7 plus 0 is equals to 7, and 7 times 0 is equals to 0. Equate okay. both factors to 0. So, transpose positive 7, we have x equals negative 7, and the other one, x plus 0 equals 0, is still 0. Now, let's try using the quadratic formula. Now, let's try using the quadratic formula. So, I'll just write it here. So, we have x equals, what is our b? 7, negative 7, plus or minus the square root of, what is our b? 7, of course, then 7 squared is 49 less 4ac, but our c is still it is equal to 0, so just disregard it. And of course, all over 2a, which is our, which is, our a is equal to 1. Okay, so we have negative 7 plus or minus 7 all over 2. Then x is equal to negative 7 minus 7 all over 2, and x equals negative 7 plus 7 all over 2. So we have x is equals to negative 14 over 2 or x equals negative 7. The other one, x equals negative 7 plus 7, 0. Okay, so 0 over 2, then x is equals to 0. Okay. Okay, another one. Can I erase? Okay. May I pa? Kung pala i-erase mo yung board. 
that I eat in the bird bowl. Our third example, we have 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Okay. What is uh, the value of our a? Yes, 2. Our b? Negative 7 and our c is equal to 3. Using the quadratic formula, okay, x equals, what is our b? Negative 7. So we have negative times negative 7 is positive 7. Plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4. And then we have our A, which is 2, and C, which is 3. All over 2 times 2. Okay. And then X equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 25. Yeah, very good, 25. All over 4. Now we have X equals what? 7 plus 5 over 4 and x is equals to 7 minus 5 all over 4. So we have 12 over 4 which is 3. Very good. x equals 3. Then x equals 2 over 4 which is what? Very good. 1. Let's try solving the equation using the factoring method. Of course, we have 2x and x because 2x times x is 2x squared. Now, the problem is what are two numbers that their product is equal to 3? We have yeah, very good. 1 and 3. Now, the problem is, where do we write 1 and where do we write 3? Okay, let's try first writing 3 here and 1 here. So, we have um, we have 2x and 3x. If we add it, it's still 5x. Okay, since positive, we, have, we should uh, put negative also to the both constants but it will not give us a sum of negative 7x so our uh, first try is does not satisfy the equation so let's try negative 3 here and negative 1 here equals 0 of course so we have 2x minus 1 equals 0 and and then transpose negative 1 on the other side of the equation we have 2x equals 1 and divide both sides by 2 our x is equals to 1 half another one x minus 3 equals 0 transpose negative 3 on the other side of the equation we have x equals positive 3 do we have the same values of x with different methods Okay, very good. Now, let's go to the application where we can solve real-life situation problems using the concept of quadratic equations. So, I'll erase the writings here so you can see the question here. Now, we'll try to solve real-life situations, okay? Family Cortez has a 96-square-meter rectangular lot intended for building their dream house. The length of the rectangular lot is 4 meters more than the width. What is the length and the width of the lot? Okay, how do we solve it? 
Okay, so we have family Cortez. They have a rectangular plot. Okay, so a rectangle composed of the longer side, which is the length, and the shorter side, which is the width. So in the problem, it says that the width, I the length, uh, the length should I say is four meters more than the width. So we have W plus four as our length. Now, what is the formula in getting the area of the rectangle? Very good. We have length times the length times the width. Okay, what is the area in the problem? Very good, 96 square meters. So we have, yeah, let's uh, use the, okay, so we have the value of our length, W plus 4 times W equals to 96. So we have W squared plus 4W, then transpose 96, then we have negative 96 equals 0. So do we all a quadratic equation now? 